Hello everyone, my name is Elliot Cornett and I go to the Alabama School of Fine Arts in downtown Birmingham, Alabama. And my project is on a low cost approach to reverse osmosis desalination that utilizes solar energy. So just for some background, right now over 785 million people worldwide lack access to clean drinking water on a daily basis. And one of the possible solutions to this problem is uh, reverse osmosis desalination or saltwater desalination in general. Now this is the process of taking salt water and removing the salt through a process called reverse osmosis. Uh, and right now, this process is most prevalent in North Africa and the Middle East. For example, the biggest desalination plant in the world is the Ashkelon desalination plant in Ashkelon, Israel. And right now, it produces around 100 million cubic meters of potable water per year. However, one of the biggest problems with a plant like this is that it is incredibly energy intensive to create enough pressure to uh, perform reverse osmosis on this scale. Uh, also, uh, a plant like this, most of the product of the potable water ends up going to oil companies and large corporations and doesn't actually get into the hands of consumers or doesn't get into the hands of the people that need the water most to survive. Which is why for my project I intend to emphasize the use of green energy and sustainable energy, particularly solar energy, uh, so that this project can be uh, ecologically sustainable and it can work in places that might not have access to electricity. Also, it should be much more affordable than a lot of the home or commercial uh, desalination systems that exist right now, and it should be able to be used at the point of contact, which means that anyone can uh, use this at uh, wherever it, it is needed, and uh, we, it, we shouldn't have to be transported large distances. So, what is reverse osmosis? Well, this is a reverse osmosis membrane, and it is a group of layers that are wound in a spiral formation, all connecting to a central tube. Uh, so the process starts as feed solution is fed into the back of the system, uh, and the inner tube is actually disconnected from the feed solution, so the feed solution actually enters straight into the layers of the membrane. And these layers include the feed channel spacer, which allows the feed solution to actually be transported through the membrane and provide space for the water to, tra to be transported. Now the membrane itself is a uh, layer that allows uh, water molecules to pass through but does not allow uh, sodium ions. So uh, with, as more pressure is generated, the water will be, end up being pushed through the membrane and being collected in the permeate collection material which allows the water to uh, travel through the membrane packet and spiral towards the center of the tube. On the outside, you have the outer wrap, which is responsible for maintaining the structural integrity of the system, as well as providing enough pressure for the uh, system to work. So like I said, as the permeate uh, spirals towards the center, it'll be collected in the permeate collection tube, which is a perforated tube in the middle of the vessel, which uh, runs all the way down the membrane and uh, the permeate collection or the permeate will end up shooting out of this end of the tube and the concentrate will fall out of the end uh, just out of the layers. Now for my project I noticed that a lot of commercial and household reverse osmosis systems use much more expensive materials than I believe were necessary. For example the uh, feed channel spacer that is used in a lot of commercial and household RO systems is uh, a material called Vexar netting which I found serves exactly the same purpose or nearly the same purpose as a screen door. Uh, so what I ended up using was a bit of screen door material as the feed channel spacer, which ended up being much less expensive than a material like Bexar netting. Uh, I continue this process for all of the parts of the membrane, uh, including using duct tape for the outer wrap and uh, wax paper as uh, uh, the inner part of the outer wrap. Um, and. Uh, also, this project uh, includes a 25 watt solar panel, uh, which would allow this project or this design to work in areas without electricity, and a, as well as a 12 volt, 35 amp hour battery that allows this uh, design to work even at night. So the battery is charged during the day using the solar panel, and it continues to function throughout the night. So this is the solar panel system. As you can see here, this is one of the 25 watt panels and it is connected to a battery, which is currently off screen, which is connected to the controller, which allows the system to be turned off and on. 
And this controller runs into the pump, which allows, or which is actually responsible for pumping the water through the membrane itself. This is the uh, this is the system in action with a incredible with a entirely charged battery. Uh, it is ran right into the uh, controller, which is run into the pump, which allow or which pumps the salinated water through the tube and through the membrane, and the uh, Permeate travels straight through this tube and collects in the white bucket, whereas the concentrate falls out of the end and collects in the yellow bucket. So, how much does this thing cost? Well, the main part of the system is just the layers, the membrane, the wax paper, and the tricot, which I use for the permeable membrane. Uh, and this ended up being not as expensive as a lot of the uh, a lot of the commercial systems out there. However, the most expensive part of this is definitely the membrane itself, which I ended up using around fifteen dollars worth of material. Uh, and I'll talk later about how that might be uh, taken down in the future. As far as the structural components of the system, the PVC pipes didn't end up co costing that much. In fact, uh, the most expensive part of it was the outer casing, which was a two inch uh, diameter PVC pipe. Uh, but like I said, it, uh, it, en it ended up being less expensive than like a commercial vessel you'll see that uh, on the market in general. Also, the fiberglass screen was only around $2, which is much less than say a Bexar netting, which would cost around $15 for the same amount of material. Uh, also, the O-ring was necessary to build enough pressure and make a watertight seal around the outside so that uh, as the water passes through the vessel, it doesn't just end up going around the system and it actually gets pushed through the membrane. Uh, so also there was uh, some vinyl tubing which allowed the water to be transferred throughout the pump and the brass fittings allowed that seal to be watertight through the membrane and the uh, collection buckets. Uh, also definitely the most expensive part of this project or at least part of the most expensive part of the RO membrane itself was the diaphragm pump, which costed around $40. And uh, this would definitely be the biggest investment for someone wanting to produce this on a large scale. However, the most expensive part of this entire project was the solar panel system by far. Uh, and I got a 100 watt solar panel kit, which came with four separate 25 watt solar panels uh, for a total of $200. However, I only used one of the solar panels, which I estimated the cost to be around $47.50. Uh, and then the lead acid battery that I used was $75, bringing the total to $207.94. However, if you did want to implement the system in a place that already had electricity and you didn't necessarily need the solar panel system, that price can be brought down to $85.45. So as for the testing criteria, uh, first of all, the, I sent fresh water through the system just to see how well it would work and how much water would actually be collected through the membrane. Uh, once I did that, I mixed some salt water uh, into a salt water solution and tested the salinity using a refractometer, which is seen on the right. And I ran the salt water through the system and tested the uh, salinity before and after. So these results were for the experimental, uh, or for my, for the experimental values, the permeation rate was around 2.86%, which means around 2.86% of the water actually ended up passing through the membrane, and the rest of it exited as uh, the concentrate. Now, ideally, in a commercial RO system, this would be around 25%, uh, and the desalination rate for my project was around 9.38%. Uh, which means that around 9.38% of the salt was actually removed from the system. And again, ideally, this would be around 95% for a commercial RO system. Now, this doesn't sound the greatest for, a, uh, for my project. However, I do have some ideas of how this can be fixed in the future, and with more time and resources, I believe that this can be done. So, for example, uh, a more pressurized vessel. One of the biggest problems that I encountered during my project is that I wasn't able to generate enough pressure to actually force the water to perform reverse osmosis and be sent through the system. So one idea that I had was uh, having a cap on the end of the system with two pressurized valves so that I can control exactly how much water was in the system and how much pressure was being built up over time. Uh, another thing 
is that I could experiment with other membrane materials as one of the most expensive parts of the actual membrane was the membrane itself. So being able to experiment with possibly less expensive materials uh, can definitely bring down the price of the membrane by a significant margin. Also, the built-in storage tank is uh, another idea I had for, so that it would create a water siphon that would allow the water to be ready to pump through the system at any time, and you wouldn't have to prime the system with fresh water to get the pressure to build up. There would just always be a water siphon available. I would like to acknowledge Campbell Hall at the University of Alabama in Birmingham for allowing me to use their laboratories as well as uh, providing most of the materials for this project, as well as my mentor Leslie Hinton in the biology department at UAB. Thank you for watching my project and I hope you have a great day.